Rocket Lab as a company has done a ton of cool stuff, there's no denying that. From chasing SpaceX to be number two in the space industry, launching the most rockets of anyone in the Western world behind SpaceX as a commercial company, developing a new medium lift launch vehicle while trading on the public markets, becoming an end-to-end -end spacecraft satellite manufacturer on the road to delivering new services from orbit, it's easy to see why their undertakings and accomplishments gather a lot of attention. However, for beginner investors taking a look at the company, a quick glance at their financials might be enough to turn you off completely. Take a look at this net income chart of the company from 2022 Q1 to 2025 Q1, showing ever increasing amounts of negative net income numbers each quarter as the company burns millions of dollars. This is enough to turn a lot of people off of the stock completely, including folks like Jim Cramer, who a few years ago on his lightning round mentioned that Rocket Lab is one to stay away from. Hey, how's it going, Jimbo? Thanks for having me on your show. Um, I found a pretty little gem a few months back called Rocket Lab USA. No, 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 no. We like companies that make money. That company that said that's like sending money up in smoke in space. It's got a bill in North Carolina. Bill. Luckily for me, though, I happen to be an avid space fan as well as an avid investor, so I took a deeper dive into the company anyway, despite these outwardly appearing ugly earnings numbers. What I found was remarkable and led to me receiving over a 500% gain on my investment over the past three years. Today, following Rocket Lab's Q1 update, I want to tell you why profitability may not be as far as it appears in this net income chart and why you should look a little bit deeper at this company before giving it a pass. I'm Dave. Thank you for watching. As always, if you're new here, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It's very helpful. And if you're not new here, those likes and comments are always great as well. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into Rocket Lab's financials. Before we dive into Rocket Lab's profitability, the first question to ask yourself is, why should you even care? I mean, investors like myself have done extremely well, thank you very much, while the company continues to burn even more and more cash every quarter, and the company is also well capitalized, being able to go to capital markets for more funds. So what's the big deal? Well, when a company goes profitable, even by the adjusted EBITDA profitability metric, investors like Jim Cramer, as well as the big hedge funds of the world, start to take notice. The big money managers can pile in more and more dollars into the stock, as well as adding it to their index funds to make sure they capture it as part of an overall industry or market. A few great examples of this are Tesla and Palantir, two growth companies that went positive and experienced a big pop after their first quarter of profitability. Tesla's first profitable quarter was all the way back in May of 2013. You can see from the chart here, right after their first quarter was announced, they had a massive run-up in the stock, going from $2.50 on a split-adjusted basis all the way to $15 plus per share. An absolutely outstanding return for shareholders if you were holding during this period. Likewise, with Palantir, their first profitable quarter was recorded on February 13th, and following the announcement, those shares went from $7.50 per share all the way up to $25 per share, and those shares have continued to climb, by the way, with the stock currently trading at a whopping $125 per share. Now, this doesn't always happen with every company when they go profitable, but I think with these really exciting growth companies, that milestone of profitability can often lead to a big bounce in the stock price. And that's what I'm looking to make sure I capture with Rocket Lab as well. Now we come to the part of the video where I did get a haircut partly through filming, and I'm sure someone's going to point it out in the comments, so I just figured I'd mention it. Hopefully you guys don't find it too distracting. Anyway, before we go into why profitability for Rocket Lab might be closer than we think, now that we have a better understanding of the significance that this catalyst could entail, I do just want to take a quick minute to thank this video's sponsor, Investing.com. 
If you're anything like me, then you're probably trying to find ways to make your investing research faster and more efficient. Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in, Investing.com. Investing.com's new flagship product, Investing Pro, helps you to save time and make better investing decisions. Their Warren AI feature allows you to bring all the power of AI to bear on your investing research. It's the chat GPT for investors, backed by all of Investing.com's proprietary data. I actually used Warren AI myself in the making of this video, including charting the data for Rocket Lab's quarterly net income, gross margins, revenues, and more. Data that I would have had to look up myself and spend much longer charting out just a couple years ago. Click the link in the description below to get 15% off your first Investing Pro subscription. And thank you to Investing.com for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the profitability numbers. Well, I already showed you the chart that looks pretty ugly at the outset where Rocket Lab is burning more and more cash every quarter, now burning up to $60 million in net income anyway in Q1 of 2025. A lot of people, when they look at growth companies and they look at their net income line, expect the march to profitability to look something like this. Kind of like a straight gradual line where you're burning capital and slowly over time your profitability metrics get better and better and eventually you hit that milestone of becoming profitable and continue rising from there. However, in my experience with a lot of growth companies, this is not the case. When you look at what really happens, growth companies are investing in the future and they are spending more and more money to get their production online, to get their product online, to get their marketing going, whatever it may be. And so in fact, you have spending and cash burn kind of increasing dramatically and kind of peaking at a certain point where say that factory finally gets online if you're a Tesla or that product that you've been building gets going. Now this isn't always the case if you're like maybe a SaaS company and you're gradually growing out your customer base and a subscription model over time then you might see like more like that first chart but for example, say a Tesla or any company that's building a factory to build a product looks a lot more like this. You're spending a ton of money up front. You're not making anything off of it. And then all of a sudden things come online and boom, uh, we shoot up and you do get towards profitability. So I wouldn't get too dismayed by seeing those net income numbers continue to drop because uh, ironically, as they drop lower is when you start to get closer to pushing towards profitability. Yeah, I know that's very counterintuitive. Now, here's a chart of Tesla. And yes, I know Rocket Lab is not a car company, but you know, similar idea where they had to build their factories to make their cars. Rocket Lab has to build out their production facilities for satellite manufacturing, as well as building Neutron is the big one we're gonna be talking a lot about, which is really sucking up a lot of the investment dollars. Now, Tesla similarly followed that trend where it wasn't burning a ton, burns more and more and more. And then, you know what, it hits profitability and it's like boom. So um, it wasn't a gradual step up towards break even. It was burning more and more and then all of a sudden that switch flips, which should be very exciting. And another thing I want to point out is uh, I know a lot of money is in holding long term with stocks, but I find when you hold uh, a company, like any company even, that is a growth company, say Rocket Lab, Palantir, Tesla, NVIDIA, anyone, I find like 90% of the growth seems to happen in 10% of the days, if that makes sense. So you're holding, 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 feels like nothing's going on in some cases for ages, ages, ages. And then you get those massive growth spurts where you have that catalyst so, you know, making sure you own when these catalysts hit is, I think, very important. And that's why uh, holding long term is a great strategy. But um, I do want to talk about this catalyst that I think is coming up for Rocket Lab. And, you know, maybe I'll play some kind of an options move on it. I'm for sure not going to sell before it happens because I think it could be a stock catalyst. So uh, I think Rocket Lab, we're going to see something similar as this Tesla chart now. 
This is Rocket Lab's quarterly revenue by quarter, and it has been growing quite substantially. We've gone from under 20 million a quarter, substantially under 20 million a quarter back in 2021. Now, uh, solidly above 100 million a quarter to looking at, you know, 130 plus million a quarter in some cases. So that is really fabulous growth, and it hasn't shown on the bottom line yet because really sucking up all the oxygen in the room is neutral. On. It takes a lot of money to bring a new rocket online. It's not cheap at all. So in some ways, uh, the profitability of the underlying businesses of their electron business model and satellite business model is kind of being hidden by Neutron. Now, in addition to these quarterly revenue numbers trending upwards, gross margin is also trending in the right direction. The past few years it was really all over the place going up and down between anywhere from sub 10 percent gross margins all the way up to you know almost 25 percent uh, now though we're really heading in the right direction and we do have that steady march that i do expect to see as the current businesses do scale and that just comes down to more and more launches each quarter, more uh, satellite business and component business each quarter. And as you scale, you get those gross margins and economies of scale going. So uh, they're hitting, you know, getting close to 30% gross margin. Uh, we do expect as the scale continues, they'll get closer to the mid 40s. And that will obviously really help the profitability numbers of their current businesses. And of course, Neutron, which has been this whole time sucking up all their cash, will uh, the spending will not stop once Neutron is ready to launch, but it will substantially decrease and it will go over to operating expenditure as opposed to R&D. And that investment that has been taking up so much money will all of a sudden start actually generating cash flow and i think that's where we get this kind of mark is i would say neutron launches about here and you know it's not immediately profitability after neutron launches but that's when the march towards profitability does start in my mind and this is actually echoed by something adam spice has said he said that we can't get to cash flow positivity on a sustained basis until we get the first neutron off the launch pad. Two quarters after the first neutron launch is where I think we turn that corner on a more permanent basis. So again, turning the corner, I guess, may not mean uh, being profitable. It may mean in terms of the direction of profitability, but in a worst case scenario, maybe Adam is saying, uh, you know, the first neutron launch is here on the chart. And then we have two quarters where the corner is not yet turned. And then we turn that corner and march towards profitability. Adam was also saying, I believe this was on an earnings call. And by the way, do check out rocketlab.wiki if you want transcripts to all the earnings calls. And basically anything you want to know about Rocket Lab is on there. Shout out to Space Ghost, great guy who runs that site. Uh, what he said is that we can tell you that when we look at each of the business lines, it would be safe to say that the vast, vast, if not all, of the cash consuming nature of this business is coming from Neutron. So when you go back to that cash burn, the vast majority of this is coming from Neutron. Neutron is not currently generating any money and the underlying business is only getting stronger and stronger, but it's not coming through on the profit line yet due to the spend that's coming in Neutron and when Neutron launches, not only will that R&D spend kind of lighten up, but it suddenly starts generating revenue. So you really have that double whammy effect of less spending plus revenue. And it makes sense, right? Like if you're building out a factory to build rockets, it costs more to build the factory than to operate it. And, you know, similar to that Tesla story. So really looking forward to when neutron launches not only because it's going to be an amazing event and an incredible capability for the company to have something very few uh, companies have done you're looking at maybe rocket lab spacex blue origin and ula but of course uh, ula has been quite slow and yeah just amazing for rocket lab to achieve that milestone with such a relatively small investment in Neutron, because when you look at the cash burn, I know it seems like a ton, um, 
ULA has spent billions of dollars on their next-gen Vulcan and Rocket Lab supposedly spending something like 300 million. So uh, definitely on the cheap, you know, compared to some of these other large-scale rockets. That is why I am very excited for Neutron's launch and the, I would say, four to six quarters following that as we really start marching towards profitability. And I think once that profitability milestone hits, that is often a significant milestone and inflection point in a stock price. So something you definitely don't want to sell right before that happens. Having said that, every stock is different. Of course, Rocket Lab has run up significantly compared to, say, Tesla when they were having some cash crunch troubles. So I'm not going to sit here and promise like a 10x or something from these levels once Rocket Lab hits profitability because, again, they have benefited from a substantial run up in the stock price all already. So that is why I am so excited for profitability. I think it's coming a lot sooner than some people think, judging by just looking at the net income chart. And that Neutron launch could be a really big catalyst. But not only that, a few quarters after it, we could be seeing a big catalyst when it comes to profitability. Let me know what when you think Neutron will launch. Personally, I'm thinking it'll be in Q4 of this year. And I know there's a lot of naysayers out there that don't think it'll happen in 2025, but I still feel fairly confident. Also love to hear your predictions on the stock price towards the end of the year and into next year if you're making any trades on it and any other ideas you might have. Let's continue the conversation in the comments down below. Thank you so much to investing.com for sponsoring this video. Much appreciated. Do check out their Warren AI feature as well as Investing Pro. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I will see you soon in the next video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe as well if you're new here and uh, bye for now.